Seems like everybody tonight, uh, it seems to be the thing to tell a little bit about your history. Uh, and I guess that's all right. Ginger Dean said it ain't bragging if you don't. But uh, I got an engineering degree from Texas A&M 50 something years ago. I guess it'll be 60 pretty quick. The Air Force sent me back down there and I got all the meteorology courses through a master's degree in meteorology and I served four years in the strategic air command as a wing weather officer for a bomb wing. But I'll tell you one thing, the cheapest tuition I ever paid was at Texas A&M. You can have all the education and all that, but I'll tell you what, you get out in the real world, you find a banker that'll back you, you stick your neck out, and then you stick it out again, and then when you go down, he'll pick you back up and go with you again. You'll learn a lot. You'll learn a whole lot. I've uh, been really fortunate in my life. Uh, I told one of the board members a little story, and I won't repeat it, but I've been on the other end of this deal. I had to acquire easements and right of woods for my own personal use. Everybody here knows that these ranchers here have got a special feeling for these sand hills. I've owned land in Louisiana, Texas, Oklahoma, Flint Hills, Kansas, and now here in Nebraska. There's only two privately owned areas in this nation today that are unspoiled, and that's the Flint Hills of Kansas and the Sand Hills of Nebraska. And it's not very widely appreciated, I can tell you that. I had to get involved and in, in, uh, work like heck in the Flint Hills of Kansas because the Army wanted to take half of the name Flint Hills and, and expand their tank training exercises. Can you imagine what that would have done to about 10 counties there in Kansas? We were able to not have that happen. But it hurts me to think how little these sand hills are appreciated. What was it you said it was going to cost a mile? Roughly a million and a half dollars. If my, you know, I'm old, I'm 81, so I can't remember things too good, but I believe that you have said today that it's worth a million and a half dollars a mile to come across land that we don't want to have this kind of thing going. And it's worth $25,000 a mile for us that have to put up with this for the rest of our life. And I'm not going to be here that long, but I got 27 grandkids. Seven kids and 27 grandkids. They actually own that. I don't own it. That's another story about the federal government and the quasi organizations and all of that. <coughs> Think about that. Why in the world, the one thing that y'all have to have is the land to put these towers on to bring this energy across. Think about that. The one thing. What, uh, you're the engineer on this project. What's one of those uh, lattice towers cost? Uh, the lattice towers would run twenty-five to thirty thousand dollars for material. One tower. Yes. Runs what? Be twenty-five to thirty thousand dollars. The tower's worth twenty-five to thirty thousand dollars, and you want to pay me four thousand dollars to put up with it perpetually? Does that make any sense? Does that make any sense? No. I'd be ashamed 
I'm not going to go through the personal detail, but one of your board members know. It's incredible. I mean, what was it, 27 or 29 people and how many meetings have we had and what's all that cost? But it's worth what you say my land's worth today. And that tower is going to be there forever. I'm going to repeat Dizzy again. It ain't bragging if you've done it. But I own this land. I've been ranching all this time. The least amount that any ranch that I ever owned appreciated in value was to double. To double. That's the least. I've had some land that went up 25 times that people thought I was crazy when I bought it. First place I ever wanted to buy, $25 an acre. My granddad said, you'll never live to be able to pay for it. What are you thinking about? Land worth four thousand dollars an acre today. It's right down there on the creek at Malakoff, Texas. But you're going to come along and say, "Well, this guy went out here, and somebody wanted to sell a ranch, and this is what he was willing to take." And so then you're going to say, "Oh, you're going to still get to use it, so we're just going to pay you eighty percent." of that. And if after I'm gone, the land doubles again, doubles again, my father-in-law said the first mistake you make is when you sell a piece of land. So I'm going to have to sell it for whatever somebody says it's worth. And it doubles and doubles. And when you all get more and more money, for the electricity that's running through that line, good for you. But for me, I still got those blowouts and whatever. And you know, doctor, give me a break. How long, well let me just ask you one question. How long will it take to restore a destroyed area? When it's denuded and, and we gotta go back and we're gonna get it back he said, we want to put it back like it was, and I, I'll take that for face value, but how long will it take to get it back to where it was? A lot of it's going to depend upon the rainfall. If you can tell me well, what you know the rainfall what, is going to be. You know it doesn't rain very often, and we don't have too many wet years around here. But but remember, it, I, remember, I've studied meteorology a good bit. Uh, it will depend a little bit on the size of the area. The smaller the size, it's going to be easier to uh, to restore. Let's just but say, probably, let me let me clarify a little bit. Okay. The line goes right through tall this hills on the property up the river, here. and the nearest trail. I won't even go up there with a four-wheeler because I know what happens if you just, you know, when I, my boys and my grandkids come here, I say, you stay on those roads where we go and take the cattle. You don't go up in the hills and run around up there because you're going to damage it. But let's just say that this all comes to pass and they've got to leave the road that we use to go out and take the cattle and they've got to go a half a mile up on the hill there and so you're going to damage, you'll agree you're going to damage how many feet wide or however going up there. Wouldn't you say you're going to damage that if you go up on the highest hill in the sand hills for sure. the vehicle? Sure. And you okay. heard that the, uh, the uh, Structures themselves will be placed on the tops of the hills. The what now? The, the poles will be placed on top of the hills. You heard that from the engineering. Oh, I've heard a whole lot. But, but if you look at it, puts it on the side. The, it's on the side. I'm just saying, you go up. How long is it going to take to go back to what it is? That's what the goal was. 
Put it back like it is. How long is it going to take? It's going to take me quite a while. But how days. many? How long? Will you let me answer the question? I'll be happy to answer the question. <laughs> depending, depending again on the rainfall, because if you do have a dry cycle, it's going to take longer. But uh, as far as driving up the hill, that's the, the, the damage that you're talking about. Are you talking about uh, removing the vegetation at the top of the damaging the top of the hill from the, uh, from the construction of the tower? What Which I'm are you talking about? What I'm talking about is saw that big crane up there. A big crane up there. You know, that they're going to use. And yeah. it's got big wide tracks on it. I, I know I had a lot of bulldozers. In Louisiana, I had to get extra wide tracks because it was wet. And when you get there and you've got to turn it, you've got to squirm around. And so up there where you are putting the tower, it's, I don't know what you said, 200 by 200. How long is it going to take for that to get back? Do, you do recall that uh, they're going to assemble those towers and fly the towers in. Remember that? But anyway, how long is it going to take? If you'll let me answer the question, I'll try. And it's going, to, again, going to depend on the rainfall, as I started to say before. But uh, uh, probably 10 years. Okay. Or longer. Yeah. 10 years. I, I think you're right. I wouldn't disagree with that at all. I think that's right. And so, when you... I've asked the question of several people, you know, how are you going to access, you're going to have a 200 foot wide strip and it's going to go 200 miles long and it's not going to cross all that many public roads. How are you going to access that? Well, you know, the answer is nobody knows because nobody knows where the storm's going to come and where there's going to need to be accessed. But I have experience in that. See, I've, I've had oil pipelines and they run that pig down there and they say it's a crack in the, and they gotta go in there and they just come, here they go. We would never do that to our ranch there in the Flint Hill. We would never have done what they do. But I'm just saying, you know, certain amount of it'll have to be done. You know, who knows where the tornado is gonna come and, and, and just like it was pointed out here, when it goes down, boy, it's got to get put back up in a hurry or it damages equipment. There's a lot of things, puts people out of business, but the facts are when you have these kind of things, and believe me, when I tell you, I've been there. I've, I've met the equipment coming down through my place, tearing it up getting to a pipeline that went to Bunky Louisiana and the people had to have water. So I mean, we, just the facts of all is that very little consideration under the model that's been described for the compensation to the landowner. The last thing that's been considered is compensation to the landowner. I don't even want to get into the fact that it devalues the rest of your land. And you can debate it all you want to, but uh, believe me, I got some experts that'll tell you that a high line across the ranch is very detrimental today because who's buying ranches today? People that got money. And they're buying them because they love the open spaces. The one that I'm most familiar with, he calls it cachet, you know? He went across the bridge at my place and he said, man, that's cachet when he saw that North Loop River. And we went up on, back into the ranch and got way back in there. It happened to be when the prairie chickens were booming. He said, man, this is, man, what a wonderful thing. I'm just telling you that nobody can tell you what that land is worth. And the thing that you say, I'm just gonna give you 80% of what somebody that wanted to sell their land for got for their land is the broken model. And that's all I've got to say. I can say a whole lot more about Well, we appreciate it. We want everybody to have a chance to, to speak, so we appreciate your consideration. <laughs>